There's a man who sits by the local barbecue on the corner. It's the same barbecue restaurant where you can order a pitcher of beer and a basket of hatchets to throw during a game. What could possibly go wrong with booze and sharp objects? I can't imagine, but anyway, he is often asking for change from people, passers-by. He'll say little things. He's very smart, but he's also possibly schizophrenic because he'll occasionally blurt things and yell and only the most ignorant among us would think that any of those things were at all personal. But somebody, some dope, <laughs> managed to punch him as hard as he could and loosen his eye socket, cause a cyst under his left cheekbone, and knock out his tooth. His mouth is filled with sores now, and his jaw looks a little crooked. The guy really suffers. He doesn't suffer any more than anyone else who'd been hit that hard, but he did go to the emergency room, the same emergency department that I went to, and said, and I quote, they really helped me, for which I am so deeply grateful. Thank you to the local emergency department for understanding mental health issues and for helping somebody who has no health care and no other options. I am deeply grateful for your service. And even though I had a rough time there with you, I know that was a mistake now because you showed compassion to my friend, to my acquaintance. I call him my friend because I talk to him a lot. I sit down next to him and I listen a lot as well. I just sit down. People always gawk at me like, why are you so close to this person? But I know from experience he's not dangerous physically. He just has problems controlling his words and his voice, his mannerisms. He has problems. They're not personal. They're not directed at me. And I know how to calm him down. Again, from experience, I, I do understand certain mental health issues. There are plenty of mental health issues I don't understand, like how somebody could be so cruel to hit him in the way that he was beaten for being mentally ill. That's another level of illness that I don't really get. It's a cruelty that was so unnecessary. Somebody feeling intimidated by a man who is basically wasting away on the streets because he has no housing and he's mentally ill and he just needs help. I'm not saying he hasn't been offered help but, and I'm not a hero. I'm not there to fix him. I'm sad because we do this to each other. We cause unfathomable suffering. And we think we're not worthy of healing ourselves. We think we're not worthy and therefore we don't offer it to others. What if this were to be integrated? It could be realistic. Our expectations do not have to be high. Imagine accepting and agreeing that mental illness is a problem for everyone. We are interdependent. I'd love to be independent and have no questions or problems or asks of others, but that's not how life works, especially now that I'm becoming disabled. Increasingly so, and quickly according to some friends who haven't seen me since before brain surgery. The last time I was able to dance, an ex of mine chose to come to the one club where they knew I felt safe, bringing an entourage of drunk new pals who had heard a story about something I had done wrong to them. And they considered it fun and even delightful to mock and mimic me. That was the last time I danced, not because of them, but because I had to get brain surgery shortly thereafter. I was grappling with my future and they mocked me the entire time I was dancing. I hope that they had fun, but it's not my job to consider or search to understand why they treated me that way. The answer is inside them. It's out of my reach. I can only know myself. My reaction was to just keep dancing and then eventually leave, which is exactly what I did. 
my partner at the time was like, why were those people doing that? That's so bizarre. What are they, 11? <laughs> and I just said, you know, maybe. Maybe around 11, their dad used to punch them when he was drunk. So they decided to punch down on somebody else. I don't know. Who knows why people make the choices they do. I don't have a hero cape on. I can't go find the man who punched the sick friend on the street. I can't do anything about that. I've already been changed by death, by, by vicinity to death. I've seen people die, people I loved and people I don't even know. And once that happens, you can never go back to the way you were before. You can't reverse that. You have to be pragmatic, too. You have to be rational. We're all heading the same way. And that's not the great equalizer. Not everybody has the same death experience. Do you think the man with no housing, asking for change in front of the barbecue, will have the same experience of someone who has care and hospice and health insurance? Probably not. How do we make things a little better than we found them? Just a little. Baby steps. Nothing big, magnanimous, nothing huge. We're not going to, you know, rescue people. But we can definitely shift into a state of non-harming at the very least. I open my window shade and I see this beautiful sun. Wow, the sunlight pouring through. It rises every day, despite my darkness at night, my dark thoughts, my storylines about being unloved or unlovable. And that is why people hurt each other, in my opinion. So I'm here to remind you that you actually are lovable. And if you could see yourself as I see you, you wouldn't behave in any way that would harm others, at least not deliberately. We all mess up. But I'm just glad you're here. I don't know why you're listening. Maybe you want to mock me. Go ahead. That's kind of fun sometimes. I do the same thing. I am silly. But I'm also honest. And I can tell you that as deeply flawed as I am, and as deeply gifted as I am, I'm just like you. We're just alike. We want the same things, <laughs> mostly. And um, I just want to remind you that you, you've got this. You can do this. Whatever it is, I believe that you can. And congratulations, by the way, on being successful at surviving, of being outside the womb, of funneling down into the pits of hell and coming back up, bouncing back up. Man, bumbles do bounce. <laughs> if you don't get that pop culture reference, maybe it's because you're younger and good on you. But you'll never be forgotten. I'm going to remember the good things, not that time on the dance floor that you were mimicking and mocking. That was just the child, the hurt child. We all show that side, every one of us. Even the gurus who sit on cushions advising others how to be more spiritual, even them, or especially them. When I lectured my kids in a style that <laughs> they'll completely ignore, I found myself mimicking my, my parents, and I thought, here we go again. We're all in this together. <laughs> uh, just do no harm whenever possible. Pitch higher. Focus on the good stuff. Ecstasy, joy, love, truth, even fantasy. Resonate with people who talk about concepts and ideas, not what other people are doing or not doing. 
You got this.